Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at uh, Unity UTP3315 TFL2 power supply from Unity. This power supply is a relatively cheap one. I bought this for about 500 liras, which is something like $70 or $60 without VAT. This is listed for about $200 on AliExpress, so maybe the AliExpress prices are inflated sometimes happens for heavy items so in this video we will take a look at the unit do the unboxing and do the teardown as well take a look at the internals there's a certificate of conformity here is the power supply Before we take a look at that, let's look at what's included. Other than this certificate, we also have a CAL certificate from Unity as well. And two pairs of uh, power supply leads. These feel like they're silicon, but yeah, I can't know for sure. I'll check for a marking on it. Nope. There is no text on the wires, so I can't really be sure if this is silicon or not, but yeah, even if it isn't, it feels nice, and it could be. And here is the power plug that's included, again, the European style for me, which is fine. And here is the power supply itself. It is pretty heavy uh, from the, for its size, but yeah, it's because it has a transformer in it, obviously. In the back, we just have the power plug with a fuse holder and a voltage selector, which is already configured for 220 volts in my case. But make sure you double check that before you plug it in, obviously. Here are the fuses they recommend for each model and in the front other than this power button we have this current adjustment knobs this is a coarse and fine so yeah it's not the usual type it in in a keypad style control but yeah it should do the job and here are your banana blocks and you also have one for earth as well so before we even turn this on let's take this apart and take a look at the internals okay let's pop the hood and take a look inside it slides back like so and even this is actually pretty heavy, so I guess the construction points there, not so great construction when it comes to attaching the plastic piece in the front with just this bracket. But well, it's kind of what you'd expect for the price. It still looks pretty nice inside, so let's try to... Actually, I'm just going to remove this from the tripod so I can give you a better look. So here is the main transformer, it looks decent enough, here is the main the power connector, everything is crimped properly, instead of just janky solder shit, it's done properly, and even these uh, parts are heat sunk, again, looks pretty nice, but in terms of the caps they are not name brand caps as you can see well, I can't read what it says but it's definitely not one of the um, well-known brands like Rinichicon, Rubicon, anything like that it's not one of those here is a better look of the main boards here as you can see it has a dual board construction going on and as you can see, 
the they have the shit capacitors that I mentioned, the Fujicon caps that I've never really heard of. And yeah, that's basically it. One thing that I didn't mention for the rest of the build. As you can see, the chassis is nicely earthed with this connector going here. And it has shakeproof washers on the screw itself. So yeah, nice attention to the build quality. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you'd expect for a proper power supply, but for a Chinese one, yeah, it's nice to see that it's actually done properly. So time to reassemble this thing and do some quick tests. As I said, I don't have, a, have the equipment to test this thing properly. And that's why I'm not calling this a review, but Okay, that's, it's time for the first time we turn this thing on. The fan is not too silent, but I'd say it's not too bad in terms of the noise it's producing. You can real hear the relay is clicking as we adjust the voltage so i just set the power supply to basically 5 volts and i'm just going to check the voltage keep in mind this is without any load on it so we do expect some irregularity but it should be still accurate and well it's basically Bang on. So let's try a little higher. Let's go to 11.47 and we're hitting 11.4. So again, pretty accurate. Let's also try the highest that this thing goes, which is 30 volts. So I'll just set it to 29, I guess. And still, it, it looks pretty accurate. Also keep in mind, this is just an XTEC EX330, it's not the highest stand multimeter in the world, so you do expect some loss with this as well, so I'd call the voltage output of this really accurate. Now let's try powering something from the power supply. Okay, let's test the power supply's voltage output with this LED light that I have. This is a 24 volt units so yeah let's see when this thing starts to light up and let's see how much power it's drawing so i'll start by adjusting the voltage with the coarse knob we're around 17 volts as you can see the LED started to light up and my cat started to meow again. I don't know if you can hear it. We're at 20 volts now. And as I'm approaching 24, I'll move on to the fine knob down here. Yeah, I think the fine knob is for adjustment of about one volt. So yeah, we're at 23 volts, basically 24 anyway. And we're drawing about uh, 0.06 amps or 60 milliamps. So yeah, let's now try limiting the current on this thing and see how that goes. To put the power supply into constant current mode, you first of all adjust your voltage somewhere between 2 and 5 volts. So let's go for I don't know, 37. Rotate your current knobs to 0. And as you can see the constant current the LED lights up. Now what you do is you grab any sort of uh, shorting method so i'm just going to use these spare ones i have and basically you short the 
plus and minus together and then you adjust your amps so I'm just going to limit for 43 milliamps because I'm just testing with the same LED strip so once you set that you break the uh, short then I'm since I'm going to plug this new thing in I'll set the voltage to zero and plug the LED in so let's turn the LED on and as you can see even though we're at 20 volts we're already constrained with the constant current mode and it's outputting 42 milliamps so yeah as you can see this mode works as well and unfortunately i don't think i can do any further testing of this unit i don't have an oscilloscope so i can test stuff like ripple and yeah i'm not really a power supply testing guy or just a, not not an electronics channel anyway i just wanted to give a quick turn down and a look of this power supply from unity for $60 if you can get it at $60 like I did this is great value the Coret ones or any of the other cheap Chinese ones they can't compete with this in terms of the quality of the components in it yes the caps were uh, some random brand but otherwise the construction of this unit was pretty good for the price and as you can see everything is working and the voltage output we got was accurate as well. Please leave me a like down below. Finally some silence. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please leave me a like down below. And thanks for watching.